now it looks fine to me. So let's see. So let's talk about calibration a little and the calibration is basically testing source with the more accurate measurement device to obtain what's the accuracy of either source or the measurement device. And usually you need to have at least four times better four times or even more time uh, more better accuracy of your reference device compared to the device under test. So that's why I prepared stack of instruments here, which we'll be playing today. And the star of the show is this Fluke 5700A. It's multifunction calibrator, capable to calibrate the instruments up to seven and a half, eight and a half digit meters. And as a reference standards, we'll use 230. 458A, this one and this one, and my 10 volt generator will be HP 3245A, this guy. So ideally, like the answer for the question how to calibrate the calibrator is, well, you don't calibrate it. You send it to Fluke or other capable calibration center and they will do it for you for some serious amount of money because it's not easy to maintain all the not easy to maintain all the required uncertainty and like for the voltage and for the resistance so even if you can calibrate it at home let's say uh, it wouldn't be easy and definitely not cheap so but here for the sake of the experiment we will try to do that mm -hmm. and because I stored already calibration uh, constants and all the information required we can always come back if anything goes wrong so I wouldn't suggest trying this experiment at somebody's sales instrument unless that's what both parties agree to so okay that was quite long introduction and for the calibration you need actually three standards one is 10 volt then one ohm resistance standard and 10 kilo ohm resistance standard so I don't have the recommended one Fluke the 732A or 732B so I'll using we will be using this generator and like measure its output uh, with my HP meters which are calibrated so we'll use this alternative way to get 10 volt all we need to do is to have it stable enough 10 volt for like 10 minutes or so while the calibration procedure is running and we don't care after that and for the resistance standard I'll use prototype Fluke SL 935 which is this guy right on top it have 1 ohm and 10 kilo ohm and nice and stable so I already measured and get some uh, base values of it that's what we will use. So let's set the instruments and see what we get. So to do this, I'll go to, to here and what we will do is output 10 volt and this one connected to bottom meter so I'll just set 10 volt fixed range set in PLC 100 set maximum resolution and turn output on so I already calibrated both of these meters and tested them 
So they very, very close. Actually, this is well within spec, even 24 hours spec. So you don't really need to calibrate anything. But we'll do it anyways for the sake of this video. And you can see 10 kilo ohm I measured by the torque meter. So this is the same value I expected before. And to obtain the best accuracy, we will need to run automatic calibration of both of the HP meters. So I'll turn the output off. Say the KO and this guy. And this procedure takes about 840 seconds and we'll bring the specification of 3458A to the 24 hour spec based on its internal LTZ 1000 reference and uh, resistance, 40 kilo ohm standard resistance. So on the top here you can see my WaveTech 4920 which is measuring 2 volts output from the generator. This is the signal required for Keith V 2001-2002 calibration. But we don't need it now, so what we can do is connect this probe. Leave it aside for now. And what we set is to set it 10 volts. Now this is not the standard 3245A, I modified it before with my LTZ 1000 reference, so it's actually very stable. I tested many times and it can maintain stability below 1 ppm for over 24 hours. So as soon as this guy is finished, I'll measure the 10 volt output on both of the meters and we will see the difference. I can also use my Keith 2002, either this one or that one, to do the same test. So the more meters we have, the more references we have. All right. And the ambient temperature is 24C. This is a relatively small room, so I have the air conditioner permanently turned on all day and temperature stabilized. So everything nice. The typical uh, calibration uh, labs, they have 23C plus minus 2 degrees and more street labs have plus minus one degrees. Of course you can calibrate with a higher temperature but then it wouldn't be necessarily traceable to typical standard lab. But if you, if you need to use the meters for the higher temperature then you can just do that. Yes, Fluke 5700A does ask about the calibration temperature. Also, I'll move the camera a little bit closer so we can see. But before I do that, I want to show my recent acquisition, which is uh, this nice set. So I, I bought all, all three volumes. So I showed this on the EV block already, and these are really nice books. They are not light. And basically, this is the collection of the, all the application notes and design notes from Linear Tech, edited by Bob Dobkin. He is the CTO of linear technology and Jim Williams, analog guru, which was working many years in linear tech. So it's have all the original stuff, all the goodies, all the pictures, photos, schematic diagrams, real nice. 
So if somebody really want to dig into the analog uh, design and find a lot of practical analog circuit, circuits and design ideas, then I highly recommend. Of course, you can download all of these application nodes online from Linear Tech site. So many engineers, I'm sure, are already familiar with content presented in here. So just a nice collection to have and I'm happy with this purchase. Yeah, it wasn't cheap, but I think it was worth it. have to move around because this is quite a small room and I can actually show you a little how it all looks like so that's my broadcasting laptop and equipment in here and some more stuff waiting over there I think I'll move camera a little bit closer to the instruments so you can see all the messages and everything what's happening. idea to stack the instruments like that because they will hit hit each other up and will affect your calibration. Okay, I think this is fairly straight. Now this 5700 doesn't have wide band option. So we'll not go into detail of calibrating that. However, I can show what is the wideband wide band option looks like. This is the wideband option for Fluke Calibrator. It consists of the two boards. One is with all the filters, and this is a oscillator assembly, it's fully shielded. And this is a oscillator controller. And your wideband output connects to port in here. It's SMB port. I bought this set of boards from eBay and they uh, have some issue so they will wait for their own own time no this is not the 5700 from the parts, this is complete unit. That project will take a while, so I don't think we will 
see much about it for maybe maybe a month or so. So we'll see about that. Okay, I'll put my sports inside. Also, I have the connected the thermistor output of the uh, fluke resistor standard, so I can show you. Currently, it's 64 kilo, so that's about 35, 36 degrees. This is the internal temperature of the resistance standard. And also what I wanted to try, if we'll have extra time, that we can try to calibrate this guy. This is my Keithley 182M. It's a sensitive voltmeter, but it's actually a predecessor to the Keithley 2182A nanovoltmeter. So it has the lowest range 3 millivolts. And for calibration, it just needs a calibrator which can output stable 3 volts, 30, uh, 3 volts, 30 volts, 300 millivolts, 30 millivolts, and 3 millivolts. So I think we are capable to calibrate this guy. I'm not sure if we'll do it in this video or in the next one. So we'll see. As of the video setup, I plan to leave like this room as it is and we'll be using it for the live streaming and all the fun stuff. I'll be getting a better microphone setup, so the sound will be much better. And also I plan to get HDMI capture card so I can uh, get the video stream directly from my DSLR. So I expect the quality will be much better once I do that. Okay, this is the CV ratio, so it will take still a couple of minutes. You can see the digits. Uh, Red, red digits on each instrument, those are GPB numbers because usually I leave the equipment running for a long time just by itself, controlled by my Raspberry Pi with GPB code. I just finished the calibration test on one of my meters and I can show you how that looks, how the report looks like. Just if you give me a second to find it. When I moved all the equipment to this room, I was surprised how quiet my main lab became. This is all the noisy equipment. Alright, so let's see. Okay, I can hear the relay skill, that means we're already done. So what we will do is measure our 10 volts now. So what 
we do is this one already connects to the bottom meter so we'll just output 10 volts and what we'll do connect this guy to our generator so we can compare the output Standard. Also because generator using BNC output, we have to use little hack like this for cable and let it thermally equalize for some minutes. Get one extra digit. Eventually I might just add extra two extra binding posts in here. There, there are actually holes in the plastic panel because the plastic panel is exactly the same one as used in the DMM. But I'll have to schedule that for the next time. So you can see it's fairly close to 10 volts, so we can just tweak the output a little. Let's say... Five. It's not necessarily uh, important, because we can use even 9995 to whatever it was value for the calibration purposes but it's just nice to have so yeah maybe I'll leave as it is now what we can do is to set the calibrator So you can remember, see we have almost ideal 10 volts, 
So we want to make sure that it stays that way. And what I'll actually also do is disconnect So this is this meter cable, nice gold plated cable, it's Belden uh, might by Belden and the model number is 8 something something, 8719, this is the same cable which Fluke used for the uh, 5440 test cables, so following almost the same as original fluke design is using so now I connected both of the meters and you can see them real nice and close can also go ahead and connect my kit limiter that guy on the top and it have the uh, shrouded banana jet so I made this contraption the same golden cable, one side is copper spade lugs for the binding post and one side is gold plated banana so let's plug it in and connect it all together Always like after you change the connection, leave it for at least a couple minutes for thermally stabilized. And I'm trying to avoid touching connectors because the contamination of the surfaces can make some measurement errors okay so now we have 10 the camera because I'm actually recording this in parallel so what we can do now is to actually start the procedure so we go set up menus Cal Cal Calibration. Now the instrument is asking us please enter present ambient air temperature in degrees Celsius. So that's what we will do. 24 C. Point zero. 
enter and now we need to connect 10 volt reference for calibration and enter exact value which we measure so what we can do is we take average between this one and this one so that would be 10 five zeros about maybe 20 to 20 microvolts or so two microvolts yeah this is mil one millivolt one microvolt and that's hundreds of the nanovolt Let it, let it sit for a little and now we can just connect to the calibrator enter the value I'll enter uh, 25 maybe. I cannot do that, so it will be just 20. And let it stabilize for a couple minutes. So let me show you the calibration report I made before using this very same calibrator is the calibration report which I run 23rd May with a high ambient temperature and I was using both meters and this blue 5700 a so you can see my test program captures all the main constants and different settings, calibration dates and also it captures the test uh, meter, meter information which is under test so this is HP 3458A procedure vibration day, DUT internal temperature, self-test result thermal version um, 7 volt uh, reference uh, voltage 40 kilo ohm reference and yeah, a few other constants and also it does the calibration constants down constant destruction overloads and here is the actual test so you can see the DCV test first we test the short to make sure it's alright then we test DCV voltage so it test both 0.1 volt negative 0.1 volt which is full scale for 0.1 scale and then one volt range 
testing both 10% and 100% scale, testing 10 volts, 100 volts, 1000 volts, and this is 24 hour specification test, so we have just only question about 1 volt, which is likely just was measurement error specific to the setup because it's double of the spec. Also, we test the CV linearity of the calibrator because actually the linearity of this meter is very good. So you can see just the offset, like 1.5 ish, 1.2 ppm, and then linearity is 2 ppm. This is just a more like a quick check than actual calibration. Then we test the resistance ranges. So you can see all the resistances from 1 ohm to 1 giga ohm. And for 1 giga ohm, I'll show you in a second. I calibrator cannot output 1 giga ohm. So I use separate box for that. So here is one one decon standard I used. It's a nice metal box. We shield it. We have the Teflon insulation inside and another box. And also have the full guardian by using pre-lock pre-axial port, as you can see. And this is the LO side, which is just standard BNC insulated from the case. And the measurement value is here. actually start the calibration so I can move camera maybe even a little bit more close so you can see the what's the messages on the output The display is a little bit dim on the calibrator, so sorry about that. Hope you can read it. Yep, I think this is good now. So we just press enter and let it do its magic Yeah, 
takes about five to ten minutes. I don't exactly remember the time. Then we will need to reverse the polarity to calibrate minus 10 volt. So what we'll just do is just to reverse the connection. I think I can show the calibration procedure from the menu. For those who are not familiar with this, and again, I highly don't recommend doing this at home, just because you may not be able to maintain all the uh, tight tolerances for the standards so it's easy to corrupt the calibration even worse than it originally is if you don't have the plan B and the calibration of this instrument is very expensive so don't try it at home Okay, so as you can see, there is no reference change. What we'll do is just proceed. And now we need to reverse the polarity. So that's exactly what we'll do. Just switch this one, like so. And let it sit for a couple minutes. to sit too long because then the output may change a little bit and that will be reflected as an error. This test is quite sensitive. exactly what we're doing right now but instead of using 732B I'm using HP 
B, 3245A. So, okay, I think we let it sit long enough. And let's continue. So, okay, now it's already finished negative, no errors. What we need to do is to connect 10 kilo ohm standard. So, let's do that then. So, first we need to... the guy all the way up which is right over there this guy and it's already have this back or terminal connection yep that's it so now we need to connect this cable to the calibrator all nice and tight standard value which is 9999.976 ohms okay let's stabilize for a couple moments so what we're doing is essentially connecting like so so that's exactly what is happening current to current sense to sense and guard connect to calibrator's guard right 
the center. The next step is one ohm. So for actual recommended calibration using Fluke 7742A resistance standards, uh, one would need to change the resistor. For my SL935 prototype, all I need to do is just flip the switch because it's contained both of the 1 ohm and 10 kilo ohm resistance. Alright, I'll try my best to share more projects. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have the permanent setup here and dedicated room for all the live streams. Also, if you have any questions, then just feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer them. Alright, we have a little change on 10 kilo, so we can proceed with calibration for 1 ohm. Let's do that now. change the switch for what is all I need to do is to flip this one like so now it's set to 1 ohm and I actually have the values right in here so that's what I'll enter So I need a second tripod so I can set up two cameras together. Okay. 1.0000562 ohms. This is my one ohm. After this step, all we need to do is disconnect everything from calibrator and let it run for a while. Because uh, currently all these three steps was to obtain the transfer from external 10 volt reference, 1 ohm and 10 kilo ohm into internal calibrator references, which are 6. Uh, 6.5 and 13 volts LTFOU based reference in the deck board and also 10 kilo ohm and 90 kilo ohm reference resistors on the ohm calibration board and then calibrator using its internal ADC will measure all the internal functions and uh, resistors and current source uh, outputs to those three standards. That's why 5700 series calibrators are so useful in metrology applications as they are simple calibration but maintain the performance uh, and stability by using this 
artifact calibration procedure. Very similar to HP 3458A multimeters, but a little bit different way how it all works. Nevertheless, both of the functions in both BMM and calibrator allow to bring the specifications to 24 hours back at basically any time of uh, instrument life. As soon as those re the reference standards are still stable. This is why you see all those HP 3458As in all the calibration factory facilities. Okay, we have just 1 ppm, minus 1 ppm on the 1 ohm, and minus 2.4 on 1.9. It's all right. So we can proceed now. rather lengthy procedure, so to entertain you a little bit more, what I can do is to, to check on the manual of KISD-182 to see what it needs for calibration, and maybe we can make a cable to connect uh, its output, which is, you can see, this Canon type big looking connector. So what we can do is prepare the cable so we can connect it to the liberator to do the calibration. So but first we will need to check what actually if the meter wants as a calibration signal. Let me find the menu for it. And then we can go ahead. Some here. 
Alright, let's see what's the phone printer is doing. It's doing just fine. You can hear some release clicking, that's like switching the functions. Yes, that is correct. You need 10 volt, 10 kilo, 1, 1 ohm for 5700, 5720, and I think 5730 as well, the latest one. And on the 10 volt and 10 kilo ohm for 3458.
well, you can do a regular calibration uh, anytime you like, just like any other instrument. So, but essentially, what the calibration facility does, they run the same calibration procedure as just shown in the video. Plus, they might have extra uh, adjustments for the range because you still can tweak each range separately. So yeah, but some of the uh, customers they will actually select to perform long calibration by using the standards such as Fluke 732B, 742A and just send the standards for calibration to obtain better uncertainty. So what we can do, we can make some connectors for the Kitley 182. So we need a short so this will be our short after I add the copper jumper and also the cable for the for connection to the calibrators such as this one. Also, like if if calibrator is used as a, just a stable signal source, then you don't really need to calibrate it even. You can use, for example, if it's just a current source, you can use uh, GMM to obtain your required level and just program the same value into calibrator. Doesn't matter if it doesn't is if it's not absolutely accurate. All you need is relative stability. This is common, for example, for bridge uh, sensor measurements and characterizations. There you go. expensive it's about I think 50 50 USD or so so yeah maybe I can add several camera for from the laptop This is the military version of it. The older manual stuff from Keithley, like 181, 
262 using the same type of the connector. So that's what we'll do. And this cable looks it's kind of scary. So here actually this is the same cable I used for my resistor testing. So this goes into the analog meter and this one goes to HP3245A to as a current source. So this is all going together and just have going to the end connector. I can use four wire to test resistors. So for the sake of the measurement, I think I can just use this two and ignore the rest. So all I need to do is just to prepare the short. Calibrator is still doing while I'll go and solder the connector. Hello, hello. Who may see me in the chat window? I have to do the connector soldering in the other room so it will be off camera
port just a piece of copper wire nothing fancy Many of the calibrator related documents I show on my website in the 5700 repair article. So you can surely go there and check for more information.
Yes, indeed, it's possible to have the thermocouple effect. So that's basically what I said. Well, sure, I can show the equipment I'm working. So right now we are calibrating uh, Fluke 5700A, which is metrology grade multifunction calibrator. It's the machine which you use to calibrate the meter, the multimeters, voltmeters, and all the uh, similar equipment. And for that, to calibrate this beast, which is usually what you would need to have Fluke or other high-level calibration facilities to do for you, 
but instead I used this 3458A one and two meter as a standard and then this HP 3245A modified universal source as a 10 volt reference and for resistance I've used this prototype unit which is fluke resistance standard the cell 935 it have both 1 ohm and 10 kilo ohm resistance standards inside and as I just sanity check we have this Kitley 2002 and another Kitley 2002 and here is the 1 giga ohm resistor and what we'll do afterwards is to try calibrate this guy it's Kitley 182M version sensitive voltmeter the only function of this box is acting as a voltage meter and it measures only voltage, DC voltage. Doesn't do resistance, current or anything like the usual DMM does. But it has the lowest range, as you can see, 3 millivolts. So it's very sensitive instrument. It's about the same size as the 2002 little bit longer as you can see and what I also have is this guy which is AC voltage measurement standard so this is essentially a voltmeter but only for AC so when you have nothing on the input here's the input you see it's given error on the range meaning that nothing is connected so that's the quick overview of everything and the uh, room temperature is 24 C and some other equipment we have right in there just Stash of the kit list. So we'll get back to them some other time. back into where it was yep Well, the firmware team spends definitely a lot of time in optimizing and making the firmware, but I don't think it's that difficult. It's just a few patterns and a few bitmaps, so there is plenty enough memory to implement a few of the easter eggs. Just to have some fun for the calibration engineers who are working with these instruments all day long. You can probably get a little bit closer view if you like. Thanks. 
something like this. Maybe I can turn off even the light. So as you can see, it takes uh, quite a bit of time, so imagine you need to calibrate many of them, like uh, some test facility or something, so you would have many calibrators in running in parallel, instead of having just one bench and running one test, waiting it to finish, and testing again. So right now it's comparing all those internal resistors to the standard, internal standard and calculating what the actual real resistance value is. Well, I think probably maybe not 100 hours, but yeah. It definitely any further change on these mature instruments would need a lot of testing. You don't want to sell the instrument for $40,000 and then explain to customer that, oh, sorry, we made a bug in the firmware, so we need another month or, or even worse, need to return the instrument back to the service facility to fix the bug. It's just not worth that. Some of the firmwares also have easter eggs For example, I can show you one from the in 2002 So, let me move the camera just a bit So, this is 2002 So what we can do is first we need to adjust the focus I think. So let's enter the secret mode. hidden messages menu and then we have HP Killer 3458A then 2000 kind of kills it well as we know today that didn't quite happen so good old 3458A's like this guy they are still still in business same as 2002, so both of the meters you still can buy brand new today if you have extra eight to ten thousand dollars. 
there is also another one HP shooter pew 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 so thanks from engineer was a little bit bored and spent probably one weekend to develop this thing and also of course you can see all the other stuff like the promotion stuff I bet they use this for the demo See all the goodies. That's it. I think they also have credits to mention all the people who designed this beautiful instrument. And you can see the constants, even adjust them. But I would not recommend doing that. Still calibrating.
the brake and the AC current right now. a fair bit amount of time. It's also not easy to measure these low currents, like 200 microamps with some serious kilohertz frequencies. different frequencies, 10 kilohertz now, and we're in an up next range. I don't believe that anyone on YouTube so far posted actual the whole procedure of 5700 series calibration. I guess I'm the first. I'm sure the meteorology people will cringe on my procedure. Anyway, anyway, this will be interesting. Somebody would tell me five years ago that uh, I would have a chance to play with all this crazy equipment and I would just laugh. But here I am. That's what happened when I bought the first. KT 2001, seven and a half digit meter, broken from eBay about nine years ago, I guess. And tried to learn about analog design, which we went into that unit and how to actually fix it, how to test, and then eventually how to calibrate. So that's all that unit fault, and I think I still have it. Because right now it's fixed and actually calibrated, so I'm about to actually start selling all my 2001s. So I have four units, and one is already actually have a wire, so I'll have to sell three more. So I can use the extra resources for future experiments.
could still have two ranges to go, so this 22 milliamp and 220 milliamp and 2.2 amps. And that's probably that's it. So let's see. This should take maybe another 10 minutes. Guys, you will be quiet in the chat. I would also like to hear uh, any Wolfnut or any other precision instrumentation related stuff uh, in the comments for this video. So it's always fascinating to see other instruments. Thanks for watching Supernova 86. So uh, hopefully I ha I'll have another video maybe next weekend. So that will be video covering some of the test results. And actually this calibrator will be already on the way back to his owner. No, I don't think there will be any extra test information on the LTC references. It's interesting because I keep getting emails and messages that like, oh, like we want to buy the reference. Like, but okay. So the largest change was 27% of 1100 volts spec. Hmm, that's interesting, and yeah, that's it. Now you either can ignore the calibration procedure data, or you can store values into EBRO, and that's it. That's the procedure. So, 
since everything went fine we can store the values hello to all the German viewers well once you have it assembled and stabilized for a couple hundred hours then sure I can help you test, test it You don't want to know how much money I spent on all of this stuff. The calibrator is not mine, it's here for service and testing. So it will be back next week. That's 27% of the specification, that's not the, that much of the difference. And as you can see, I can actually show it to you done with the calibration done set up so 4000 volts the specification is let's see the calibrator is set to 24 hours not one year specification so the uncertainty is 7.6 ppm and the calibration result was that 27% of the 7.6 ppm so you can calculate how much is that And indeed we can test this by connecting it back to our HP meters just in a moment. Let me get the camera adjusted. Like so. So what I'll do, disconnect my resistors. I don't want to supply 1000 volts into one ohm. That wouldn't be great. So what we can do instead is to connect what I'm doing right now, connecting this meter and this meter to the calibrator output. can output 1000 volts and see their test result so that's about what let's see done seeing this According to both of these two meters, I don't think we need any adjustment at all to get perfect thousand volts. What we can do now is test 10 volt. Go down. Go down. Look at that! Uh, I can 
and get the camera a little bit closer so you can see all this in full glory So you can see all the meters. Oh yeah, this is good. Let's test one volt. Oops, my camera is falling. we can also try is to test 10 kilo ohm resistor so I need to connect this extra sense wire because what we want for best accuracy is for wire connection so that's exactly what I'm doing here connect this guy and connect this So now we switch to 4 wire mode, output 10 kilo ohm and operate and configure the meter, offset compensation enable, set the delay 3 seconds and make sure we have 100 NPLC for the best accuracy. Now this test takes a while. So it's about 13 seconds for one sample. And the value from the calibrator is you cannot adjust it, it's fixed value based on the calibration result. Labs prefer 3458D to any other instrument, even uh, own Fluke uh, 8508. We 
which is have that that means they have a little bit better specification and accuracy than 3458A, but because it's difficult in calibration, it's less preferred option usually. Because essentially your 3458A or 5700A is as stable and as good as you used reference standard because you can run this calibration even every day if you like to. And the actual transfer accuracy is really good. It's usually below 1 ppm from the standard. So we got the first measurement, which is very close, not exact, but very close. So we can actually use the calibrator display to show what's the difference. I think the second sample will be a little bit better. So I'll just turn it just a little. And let's see. 170 kilo ohm is 1.2 ppm. One sixty nine is one point one ppm. The wave tag on the top is AC voltage measurement standard or the AC. AVMS system. So this is essentially a AC voltmeter, but very accurate one. And actually we can test that. Instead of resistance, what we can do is connect wave tech output to let's see AC voltage and output let's say one volt, one kilohertz. That's what I'm saying here. One volt, one kilohertz. Let's output. So that's pretty close to one volt. But actually, accuracy spec of the 3458A is not that great for AC voltage. And what we can do. Connect 4920M. So I'm connecting here the RG400 cable to the AC input. We said the um, we get the cable out of the wire. Okay. We said one volt, and now I just use this banana to BNC adapter and we'll plug it in and this is what we get so that's one six zeros four As you can see, it have much higher resolution than the 3458A also. We can monitor different frequency. That's the frequency. Monitor PPM deviation from the, let's say, Yeah, from this value. So you can see it's single digit PPM deviations for AC voltage.
and also this Daytron or WaveTech can measure up to 1000 volts so we can output let's say 10 volts so there's our 10 volts slowly stabilizing Try even higher frequency, let's say 100 kilohertz. So there is our 100 kilohertz. Maybe we can try go higher, even higher. One megahertz. So I'll press one megahertz. Oops, that's the resistance. My bad. Uh, ten volt. Ten volt one megahertz. So there is still the this meter connected. So we can disconnect by using front rear switch. Here. And we can monitor the frequency. One meg. And 100 millivolt, 1 megahertz, gives us, we need to go down 300 millivolt range. And we are real off. So, measuring these high frequencies is not easy. Especially when the signal is low and you have all these adapters and cables. So I think that's it for today. And I hope as usual this was be was useful for little insight on how to work with precision instruments so if you have any ideas or comments or questions then let me know and I'll be glad to dedicate new episodes for the next time thanks for watching